Melanie Fernandez Pradier from Microsoft Research, and she is going to talk about from the research to the clinic, aligning ML systems with clinicians for improved mental care. So Melanie, when you're ready, share your screen. All right, thank you for having me today. And also congratulations everyone for making it to the last invited talk uh, of this conference. Uh, also, I appreciate uh, for letting me join remotely. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the works uh, that my colleagues at Harvard and I did um, just before I joined Microsoft Research. Uh, I will share my experience working on interpretable machine learning models for personalized mental care. And please feel free to jump in uh, and ask any clarifying questions uh, during the talk. Uh, otherwise, we will have a yeah, the short Q&A at the end of the presentation, as, as usual. Um, yeah. So yeah, le please let me know if there is any question in the room. Uh, yeah. All right, so before I start, uh, I would like to raise attention to the noticeable gap that exists between machine learning research in scientific publications and the real world. Um, so although machine learning has flourished in the last decades, uh, revolutionizing fields like uh, computer vision, natural language processing, and speech processing, uh, success stories deploying machine learning systems in the clinic remain limited in comparison. So in the context of healthcare, uh, machine learning systems often achieve high performance in, in research papers. Uh, matching or even exceeding human clinicians. Uh, so, so then why are we struggling um, to bring such promising machine learning research to the clinic? And obviously there are uh, barriers at several levels, uh, logistics, uh, engineering, administrative considerations. Uh, but if we focus on research aspects solely, here in this talk, I argue that lack of interpretability and misalignment with clinicians are frequent red flags um, when deploying such systems in the clinic. So in this talk, I will share my experience trying to bridge uh, the gap uh, and uh, trying to bring machine learning research to the clinic in the context of, uh, context of uh, mental care. So in the, in the first uh, part of the talk, uh, I'll give a brief introduction on AI for mental care, uh, why it matters, and what kind of problems uh, machine learning systems are able to solve. Um, so leveraging information from electronic health records. So after some success stories, uh, I will also uh, share some unexpected narrative results uh, that we got via user studies. And so a word of caution, basically, uh, and that is that a combination of human plus ML system may actually underperform compared to the clinician alone. Uh, so we have to be careful when we deploy those systems, right? But still, there is potential for machine learning to be helpful in such domains. And so in the second part of the talk here, point three, I'm going to uh, present an approach that seeks to, seeks to in, in, increase alignment of machine learning systems with humans as much as possible. And, and so increasing overall performance of human plus ML uh, systems uh, in, in, in combination. All right, so mental care is uh, a very pressing problem in society. Uh, I don't think I have to convince you of that, uh, but just to give you a, a few uh, point, data points, so according to the World uh, Health Organization, one in every out people uh, in, in the planet live with a mental disorder. Then depression is, is a leading cause of disability worldwide. And suicide is the fourth cause of death in uh, the population uh, between 15 and 29 years old. So there is a, this, this pressing problem and now with digitalization of health records, uh, there are several opportunities for machine learning research uh, to improve mental care. Uh, so a few years ago, my colleagues and I started looking at uh, uh, the problem of personalizing antidepressant prescriptions based on electronic health records. 
So the key question that we uh, ask is, given those electronic health records, can we train machine learning systems to give valuable insights that help clinicians prescribe better antidepressants? So there are three important aspects to consider when prescribing antidepressants here uh, depicted in this triangle. Um, these are efficacy, tolerability, and safety. So efficacy concerns uh, or refers to whether the drug works, right? So does the drug has an effect or not on the well-being uh, of the patient? Then tolerability refers to how much side effects the drug in question causes. And those might be uh, unrelated to the mental disorder, actually. It could be you know, side effect of insomnia, uh, irritability, uh, overweight, et cetera. So the last, point, the last aspect, safety, refers to how likely a drug is to worsen uh, the mental state of a patient. So for example, you want to be especially uh, conservative uh, with patients at higher risk of, of suicide. So in our work, we look at electronic health records uh, to define computable proxies for each of these three uh, uh, aspects, efficacy, tolerability, and safety, and use uh, machine learning systems to predict such proxies. So here are some of the works that my colleagues and I uh, basically uh, work on. So we look at three prediction tasks uh, given the billing codes in electronic health records. First, can we predict treatment stability? And that's defined as, uh, will a patient stay on the same combination of antidepressants for a long enough period of time? Um, because that would indicate if you are having a same antidepressant for a few years, probably it, it's actually helping, otherwise you will stop. Yeah. The second uh, prediction task was, can we predict whether a patient will drop out uh, earlier than advised medically? And the truth is that actually two, two thirds, around two thirds of the patients will uh, discontinue their treatment earlier than, than they should. Uh, so that's a very important problem for in psychiatry. And the third problem that we look at was, can we identify early, early on when a patient with major depressive disorder um, will transition to bipolar disorder? So this, this is a common uh, misdiagnosis that can actually cause a lot of pain uh, in, to, to patients no? uh, when, uh, when not treated uh, accordingly. So, okay, so this, for all these uh, um, uh, predictive tasks, we use different models. I'm not going into uh, uh, many details, but basically models like logistic regression, random forest, we use topic models. And, and yeah, so the summary is that yes, uh, it was possible in those works to use machine learning systems to make uh, uh, such predictions and actually improve above uh, baselines uh, that, were, that, that have value at the moment uh, for clinicians. So we were reaching AUCs uh, in the order of 60s or 70s, which, you know, it's not great, but still it's promising. I mean, it's a very complex type of data. And, and again, it, we have to make sure that we are comparing against the right baselines. So it's still promising against those and with the potential to make uh, a difference or an improvement in the clinic. Uh, yeah, for example, as a final example in the last paper of bipolar disorder. Um, so we had a held out uh, center. All of these, we actually trained, we had two uh, access to two data sets of two separate hospitals. And we always uh, train on one, validated uh, externally on the second one. And so we were able to consistently detect patients with uh, three times higher risk of transitioning to bipolar disorder uh, after uh, having a, a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. All right, so that's great. And we were very excited with these, uh, with these results, but still um, the endpoints that we were predicting were just proxies for what we actually cared for. Um, 
And then it is still unclear how much would such machine learning systems actually help in reality, right? So what would the real impact be? And for that, we actually uh, went uh, into the road or, or actually conducted user, user studies and with the goal of understanding how clinicians' treatment decisions are influenced by these machine learning recommendations and explanations. So we conducted this within subject factorial user study and we queried uh, 220 clinicians. Uh, we, we showed them a, a set of patient vignettes and we collected some ground truth from five psychopharmacology experts, which based on those descriptions of the vignettes, I'm going to show you an example in a, in a, in a second. Based on the description of the situation, patient A comes at the clinic, it has these and these um, uh, properties, which antidepressant would you actually recommend? And so our experts would actually rank all the options available and we will compute the ground truth based on the uh, average of those. Uh, also making sure that we focus on the top ones and the, so the, the highly top ranked and for, for the right, so the, for the correct recommendations. And then we, as I'm going to say in, uh, in a minute, we, we also show them uh, incorrect recommendations. So here, because here the goal was to see, okay, how would actual recommendations plus explanations influence uh, clinicians. So the variables that we were changing in the user study where recommendation could take values as none, they could be correct recommendation or incorrect. And explanations could be either an existent, placebo, which would be something like, this recommendation uh, was based on electronic health records. That's it, just a sentence. Feature based would be some sort of a visualization of top rank features, and rule based would be uh, a, a, a more complicated description of okay, we so we are uh, giving this drug because it's safer or because uh, it's uh, it doesn't cause insomnia, etc. Something like that. All right, so we evaluated the impact of uh, the machine learning system by looking at treatment selection accuracy based on concordance with respect to this expert psychopharmacologist uh, 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 ground truth data. So here is one example of such user study. Uh, and here the recommendation will look like this, uh, a list of uh, scored, ranked, uh, so, recommend, so antidepressants ranked uh, by the score of our machine learning system and on the bottom, optionally an explanation. And okay, the takeaways were actually quite uh, surprising to us. No? So the first one is that uh, we found out that correct recommendation actually were not helping. Uh, all right, but most uh, strikingly, incorrect machine learning recommendations were actually hurting. That is, explanations were not enough for addressing our reliance on imperfect or incorrect uh, um, recommendations of the machine learning algorithms. One important and inter uh, aspect is that, so in the explanations, we have feature-based and rule-based, and we noticed that feature-based explanations would actually tend to uh, uh, lead to worse um, to, to a, a, a bigger degradation in accuracy as opposed to rule-based explanations. And so one hypothesis that we have is that uh, it could be because the rule-based explanation actually, um, uh, so it's going to interact more or it's going to uh, um, uh, get the clinician also involved in the decision, whereas a feature-based explanation is a simpler uh, rule and it just is easier for the human to actually just follow uh, the incorrect recommendation. All right, so at this point, we were a little bit uh, like without a, 
much uh, you know at the loss of okay what how so how should we proceed right so we have machine learning systems uh, in uh, you know in in the publications that actually we we if we have seen they can perform pretty well and yet in reality when we test that with users uh, with true uh, real clinicians we see there is a risk and we see that there is actually a mismatch so further conversation with clinicians highlighted the importance of alignment between humans and machine learning systems, which is the origin or, or the reason why we went to develop a model uh, that actually is trying to learn to assist, okay? Trying to adapt to the, to the human. Okay, and as final takeaways is, so again, I think that interpretability and human uh, uh, alignment of machine learning systems with humans are crucial if we really want to bring the, the, the research to the clinic. We need to not only think about the model, but think about how and when those systems will be applied. And then very importantly, we need to talk with clinicians to optimize for the right properties uh, in your machine learning models and for the right downstream tasks. Okay, and obviously, uh, I would like to thank you, thank, thank my wonderful collaborators at Harvard and from both the computer science, also the human computer interaction, as well as um, the expert, so our collaborators, expert clinicians at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Thanks again for listening, and I'll be very happy to take any questions from the audience.